every time that I pick up my utmost, I always think, this is the year that I'm going to get through it. <laughs> it's been 30 some odd years of me telling anyone and everyone that would listen that, hey, get a copy of it and try reading it daily, living it personally, and applying it emotionally to yourself and see how far you get. And the funny thing is, is that in 30 years, I've never gotten through it, but now with the emotionals, you know, and having this ministry to participate in it, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing just how far, you know, make it all the way through. It's been a joy over these years to have my utmost for his highest as part of my devotional reading and now evotional participation. The price of vision. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord, Isaiah 6.1. Our soul's history with God is frequently the history of the passing of the hero. Over and over again, God has to remove our friends in order to bring himself in their place. And that is why we faint and fail and get discouraged. Take it personally. In the year, the one who stood to... Wow. Let's try that one again. Take it personally. In the year that the one who stood to me for all that God was, died. I gave up everything. I became ill. I got disheartened. Or I saw the Lord. My vision of God depends upon the state of my character. Character determines revelation. Before I can say, I saw also the Lord, there must be something corresponding to God in my character. Until I am born again and begin to see the kingdom of God, I see along the line of only my prejudices. They influence what I see and how I see it. I need the surgical operation of external events and internal purification. It must be God first, God second, and God third, until the life is faced steadily with God only, and no one else is of my account whatsoever. In all the world there is none but thee, my God, and there is none but thee. Keep paying the price. Let God see that you are willing to live up to the vision. You know, it's interesting is that, boy, when, when Chambers decides to hit something right between the eyes, he doesn't mince words, he doesn't choose words, he doesn't allow distractions or objections to come in anywhere in between what he's zeroing in on. And it reminds me of Jesus, because Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount was pretty direct. He said, if anything, anything stops you from the kingdom of God, remove it. And he wasn't figurative, he was literal. He said, if your eye offends you, cut it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. The point being is that God must be our desire with all that we are and all that we want. It can't be, I want God so I can have my ministry. I want God so I can have a gift. I want God so I can get. If it isn't and you aren't in love with Jesus as he is, the reality of him, the personal touch from him, and you have anything else in place of it, you will go no farther because God will not draw you unto himself except that you want him more than anything else. The famous line that people like to pretend like they believe in is, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. A person who has seen a deer dying of thirst and panting after water knows exactly what a deer can do. It's like a horse in heat. When a horse wants to mate with its mare, then a stallion will go through two by fours, four by fours, and bust up any kind of corral in order to get through. And the, the force and the power of that is amazing. Well, the deer, when it's panting for the water, is so going after that, that irregardless of the cost, it goes forward. And it comes to the place of knowing God and drinking of the water. And that's what we are called to do. We are challenged to want God so bad that it aches 
that it hurts, that we want nothing else between us except for Him to be with us. And that's what God desires. But the question is, <laughs> the challenge is, is that what you want? It's what I want. That's what utmost is saying. That's why they call it utmost. <laughs>